Um, we are, because this class uh, started so late, not today or yesterday, but be when the course began, I was already several weeks, maybe even as much as a month behind. So I'm having to do more reading than I really want to, but it's the only way we're going to cover any ground here. <clears throat> um, so I, I titled this little section, Willingness to Look Deeper. <clears throat> when I am referring to uh, physics, I am referring really to two different schools of thought. One is those who really hold to um, relativity, and that was Einstein's big area, at least his breakthrough. And the other one is quantum mechanics, which Einstein had a lot of input on that one also. Um, but, but these two schools of thought <coughs> have had problems and I equate that to Christianity and the, the differences that are within Christianity and the problems of finding one view, holding that one view, and holding it against someone with a different view than our own. <clears throat> so there are many realities that are understood by physicists, but even among things that make sense in themselves, do not seem to connect and make sense in the larger picture. And that means that relativity works in certain areas and quantum mechanics work in certain areas, but in, in s certain other areas, they can't get them both to come together. In fact, they seem to be <coughs> uh, opposed. It is like ministries that specialize in specifics. such as evangelism, prayer, family, deliverance, church growth, holiness, spiritual gifts, children's ministry. All of these are true, and they are, and all of them are in the Bible. Can I get amen? amen. They're all true, and they're all in the Bible. But remember, our search in this class is we are trying to find the basic building block that applies in all all areas. Got it? I mean, do you see that? We are not satisfied to learn one area. We want to learn the core truth, the mother of all theories, if you will, if you were talking as a physicist, the thing that uh, can be applied and will work in and among every area um, of application. <clears throat> Let's face it. Children's ministry does not work in every area. Evangelism does not cover every area. The, uh, and many of the people that hold these particular specific things gravitate people that think like they do and they sort of get their own thing going even within the church. And remember we had a picture of the body up here. Even within the body of Christ, they make that the body of Christ or they make that the, the, the big important thing. <clears throat> um, all of these things are true and have relevance and importance, but usually we make our particular emphasis the central point. And that's what we're shooting for, the central point. If everybody does this, making their area the central point, then we come up with divisions. Then we will have divisions. The goal, talking physics now, but spiritually, the goal is to combine relativity and quantum theory into a single unified theory that complements both. Physicists leaning toward relativity cannot reconcile what they have found to be true with those who hold primarily to quantum physics. For this reason, there is a determined, and this is to their credit, for this reason, there is a determined search to find the innermost workings of nature what is the central point from which all else finds its place? And they are seeking. They're not fooling around like many Christians. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Both sides of their theories have made valid predictions that have proven out based on the predicted observation or the manifestation of the test that they've set forth. The reason why I say the manifestation of the test because, <clears throat> you know, you can't see atoms and you can't see, well, my list is gone, you can't see quarks and you can't see uh, electrons and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> You're working based on what you believe is true in the unseen, and you do this, this, and this, and when this happens, then you know it's true. You see what I'm saying? And, uh, well, as I said, both of them have, have learned things from the manifestation <coughs> uh, based on the test that they set forth. But we must first see the inward prime reality before we fully grasp or even notice the manifestation. And here's what I mean by that is, uh, in fact, I'll spend much of the rest of this just talking about it. Manifestation is what you can see, feel, taste, or touch. Man in most cases, manifestation is nothing more than breaking into the material realm of our understanding and our sight and our senses. I, if I can see it, if I can feel it, if I can taste it, if I can touch it, then I believe it. But the things we're talking about here in physics, and this, this relates spiritually, there are spiritual realities that bring about those things. You know, uh, I mean, it just occurs to me, but a good example of that would be if I had a balloon right now, a blown up balloon, and I took it and I rubbed it on my head, what would happen? And, my, and I would hold it this far away after I did that, my hair would be doing this, right? Now, how would that be happening? Well, I'll tell you. First of all, just in simple explanation, unseen forces, an actual force that is bringing about something that you can't see is at work. And you move the balloon over here a little bit, and the hair goes over here, and you move it over here. Same thing with uh, iron filings, and you have a magnet. And you, you, you turn it one way, and you push, and you can push those filings all over the place, and yet you're not touching them. Because why? Because there is an invisible force, literal, literal force that is Cause is moving things and controlling things that we can't see. Well, somebody a long time ago went, hmm, look at that. Between the magnet and the filings, there appears to be, and if you laid a bunch of filings out, if you laid a whole bunch on a table, and you took that magnet in the opposite what, force, and you shoved it in there, if it, the table was basically covered by the shape formed with those filings, you would literally see the shape of the force, though you could never see the force. Make sense? Okay. So there are unseen forces at work that we see them spiritually. You know, remember, we're not talking about physics here. We're talking about the Lord. Or do we just see manifestations of things in a certain light and never ask questions? Just take it for granted or don't think. It doesn't stir anything. We're not looking for anything. We don't care. Just as long as when I flip the switch, the light comes on or something. You, you see? Well, thank God everybody doesn't think that way. Because God didn't create a switch. He created unseen forces. And in the Lord, folks, there are unseen forces. There are powerful forces, and I'll just tell you one that is so much more powerful than anything I could describe, and it's called the cross. Amen. And, and I'll tell you what, I know it's true because, number one, my spirit bore witness to that when I first heard about it. I mean, it was like Jesus leaping in my womb. It was like, there is something to, now there's something to this life out of death thing, and, and this selflessness, self-giving in this manner. I knew it. But then, as I began to search the scriptures, God began to open my eyes to it. Okay, well, that's just, that's light shining into my understanding, but that's still not the reality of the force at work. 
But then with time, when I began to lay down my life, when I began to hold my tongue, when I began to, to not stand up for my own rights, when I began to enact the cross, when I began to release an unseen force, which is really nothing more than the nature of the Lamb, I began to see things happen, and they were predictable. <laughs> That's what was cool. It was predictable. You could actually know if this, if you do this, this, and this, this manifestation will happen. You have to line up with the unseen force of this thing. You have to understand the force and work with it. And we're not talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi here. May the force be with you. Because if the cross is with you, it's going to be totally different than you being a Jedi in the manner that most people think. You'll be a dead eye. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> so my last thing that I read says this, but we must first see the inward prime reality before we can fully grasp the manifestation. You may see the manifestation, but you may not grasp it. I mean, a good example of that is Jesus' death on the cross. The day he's on the cross... Even the 12 take off, run, and hide. John is the only one there close enough that Jesus can see. But not just him. The whole world basically turns against him, runs and hides. And yet, in our day and time now, there's Christians everywhere. There are thousands. There are millions of believers from centuries from that time. On that day, he was alone. A corn of wheat, a grain of wheat fell into the ground and died. Now it's brought forth much fruit, and we can see the manifestation of that and, and, and preach it on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. And everyone goes, yes, but what are they actually rejoicing in? They're not rejoicing at the invisible force. They're not rejoicing at the principle of the thing. They're rejoicing at the benefit to them. They don't care how Jesus brought it about. They don't care if it's a, at work in them. They don't care about all that. In fact, it's not that they don't care. They don't care about discovery beyond what just makes sense. You know, if you flip a switch, the light comes on kind of thinking. Okay? And so what we're dealing with here is we are trying to stir up a desire to know the Lord in the realm of the invisible that manifests itself to the visible realm. Instead of just trying to do that by being good and being sweet and Christian. Okay? <clears throat> However, we may be very understanding of manifestations, meaning we really, we've studied manifestations and hold them as independent things in themselves. When a manifestation, by its very nature, <laughs> comes from something else. Can I get amen? a man? A manifestation is something manifesting itself from something else. It is the manifestation that there is something, and in this case, something unseen. <clears throat> um, we may look no further because we believe that they're independent in themselves. We may not seek beyond what is observable to discover what we are yet blind to. Okay. Now, in terms of the cross, you can observe it in Christ. You can observe it in Paul. But you're not going to see the unseen force at work around you, in your life, around your life, in your family, in your relationships or whatever, unless that force is at work in you. And if the, can I say it like this? If the force of it is not at work in you, then you're just a believer. What does that mean? You just believe things about God. Nothing changes you, nothing fixes you, nothing works for you. 
but you're a believer and you're content with that and you feel good because I believe things about God. But God's definition of belief is not that you believe concepts, but that you believe realities that have power. I've often said there is, is no power in the doctrine of Jesus. There's only power in Jesus. <laughs> you know, religion has long held up Jesus, but it's been powerless. And what is what does that one scripture say? Something about believing the truth but denying the power thereof? What is has it worded in having a form of it. Having a form not it, but a form of it. But denying the power of it. Well, you know, of course when I was first born again, the power of it to me was miracles and casting out demons and doing all this stuff. Now the power of it is is the power of an endless life, the power of the cross. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to us to men, to successful businessmen, to successful ministers, but to we who are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the greatest reality. And when he continues to explain that after that, in the exact following scriptures there in 1 Corinthians, <clears throat> he does nothing short of describing the very wisdom of God as this principle of selfless selflessness, of self-giving, of what we call the cross or what we call the lamb, whatever you want to call it. You know, we could, again, we could not ever refer to the cross and make some people happy. We could go even further and never refer to the lamb and make some people happy. But it's still the truth if you call it selfless or self-giving, selfless living or whatever. It's still the lamb. It's still a person. And it's still the reality of his life. And the power. Because there's no life out of your death. There's only life out of his death. His death is so, his life and his death is from above. Yes. If I be lifted up from the earth, get us out of this earth. Get us out of the realm of time and space and direction and up and down and north and, you know. You know. I mean, even even that, that, that north, West thing. You can be, you can have somebody standing right here, and you can say, they say, well, what, what direction is west? And you go, what's well, over there? Or east is over there. What direction is west? It's over here. Okay, so you go, what direction is east? There. What direction? Not that it is. I'm just using this as an example. What? Because them watching don't know what direction we're pointing here. <laughs> it's, everything is bearing out the truth of what I've been trying to tell you in the last class. Huh? <clears throat> so, using me as a frame of reference, east is over there and west is over there. And so the person would say to me, then I'm west of you. And you say, yeah. And then you take one step over around them and then you say, no, you're east of me. Did you see what I just did? You take one, and now they're over here. You just stepped around them. You say, now you're east. I'm to your west. What? The directions haven't changed. The world is, how is this happening? I'll tell you how it's happening because it's all based on what is relative, primarily relative to the earth. It is. It fits in with the way the earth is, and yet it, because it's earthly, it has no stability in itself. It is unstable and can change with one step over, you see. <clears throat> of course, we've been lulled to sleep to think that this is such a great place and everything is, makes such sense. But you just look at it a little bit and you go, you know what, a lot of this doesn't make sense at all. It just doesn't make sense when you really examine it. <clears throat> all right. Um, <clears throat> You must not be distracted by the individual function, but be discriminating enough to distinguish its effects from its source. And folks, people that are into revival and miracles and running around screaming and jumping and all this kind of stuff, 
They are primarily involved in the effects, not with the source. Yes, it takes the source to bring that about, but it takes the, it takes the source to, to, to make the liver function. It takes the source to make the heart beat. It takes the source life to make the brain function. Yes, he's involved in his whole body in every area, but every area is not him. That's what we're talking about. We're, tr we're on a search of discovery to get down to the very basic element, what physicists call string theory, what we call, we don't know how he is known. We just know it, it ends up being Jesus. The reason why I say we don't know is because <clears throat> do you think that I have arrived in what? 40 years of following Jesus, do you think I've arrived or even close? I mean, the ancient of days, the one that it was without beginning already puts me to shame, much less without end, which messes with time right there. <laughs> Just bust time wide open, you know, and takes us into, a, into the heavenly, into a realm that doesn't make sense. But I, you know, I am on a journey. I am on a search to know the Lord. I want to know the Lord from the very core issues of his heart. And that's why we're using this example of physicists, because guess what? They happen to be doing the same thing in the realm of physics. <clears throat> They'll never find the Lord, but they might find the smallest particle of which we were going down the line here. And by the way, I didn't list all the particles. There's, you know, a bunch of other particles <clears throat> in that list. But I wanted to give you a basic rundown so that you could see how things are falling in, in terms of subatomic particles. <clears throat> um, so um, the problem arises when we see things in general, but we do not consider or even question as to if it has a deeper significance of which I am unaware. We see in general. We see in general. <clears throat> Thought it was interesting they were talking. Yes. Consider this, and that's one of the things I've had to do constantly in my search here. I've had to say this, I've had to back up and apply that phraseology to Christianity every step of the way. I've had to because the Holy Spirit has forced me to do it. And here's what I mean when I say that. <clears throat> he has forced me to say, but Christians have done the same thing in that they have not found the central building block of the body of Christ, or the central building block of all matter, or the central building block from which all ministries or all denominations or whatever find their unity, find their oneness. <clears throat> and so, this is going to sound weird, so I've ended up actually having a, a greater respect for scientists on their search, even though they don't have, they're not born again, so they don't know where to look. They really are looking. And, you know, now right now, this goes out and people are, you know, the Christians are going to go, my God, you know, scientists are idiots. We're the ones that have it, you know, and I'm going, we're the idiots. No, I'm sorry. Maybe we should, <clears throat> maybe we should bleep all that. <clears throat> all right. Um, so let me read this again. The problem, because I actually didn't finish the sentence, I don't think. The problem arises when we see things in general but do not consider or even question as, as 
to if it has a deeper sig significance of which I am unaware. We hold to what we know and have experienced already. And I want to give you an example of that. We must learn to look deeper beyond the status quo. As we pass by at night, we may observe a city park. It is dark, unmowed, and uninhabited. The deepest we may think is that the city worker paid to mow may have failed to show up. But the problem could be deeper. Maybe there's a problem with the city worker who is slack in his duties. This may actually point to a deeper problem. Maybe the city leaders are not involved enough and they are slack. Or maybe this park is a sign of, a national, of national economic problems where finances are not there to handle daily necessities. Financial collapse of the nation or world may be looming. And do you understand what, I, what I'm trying to say there? That, that we just think about the guy didn't show up to mow and change the light bulb that's out. Are you following? When in reality there may be deeper significance. It may go right to the heart of the whole city. It may go to the heart of the nation. It may go to the heart of the world. But we don't think like that. And, and I'm not saying these things so that we look at something like that and worry. Many of you do think like that. You look at something, oh my God, does this mean a catastrophic end to the whole nation? Well, probably not. Probably he just failed to mow today. But nonetheless, <clears throat> You know, for, for you warriors, I have to say it like that. But, f but for you who will not allow worry to get to control you, we have to look deeper and say, I see the manifestation. I see the effect. What is the cause? Cause and effect, cause and effect is an invisible force causing my hair to stand out. I mean, some, somebody thought about it once, a long time ago, and went, how is that happening? And look, when I move the balloon over here, the hair goes like, and, you go, and you're going, man, and it, but it's not touching the hair. <clears throat> and Einstein and others says there are, there are atoms. There are invisible or particles this is not just one piece, it is many particles. And those, by doing this, it's causing a, an electrical charge, and it is charging the particles, which is true. Charging the particles. And the force between the balloon and the hair, though unseen, is genuine and real. And when you see the, the effect, you question and say, now what is the cause of this? You can do that in negative situations. I do it all the time. I have to, I have to do counseling with people. And I've had, oh, you would not believe some of the counseling sessions I've had. You know, I have people tell me all this stuff, and it's all these negative charged atoms in their life. <laughs> and all it can do is bring destruction or, you know, uh, um, atomic reaction. But I have others who tell me things and they're in tune with the Lord on positive charged things. And they're seeing the effects of life, of the Lord, of the cross, of a faithful walk with the Lord, of staying in the word, of hungering and thirsting after Christ, of, of, of always being teachable, never satisfied, how can I be satisfied? There's so much more of the Lord. I mean, that's the truth. That's the truth. That, you know, we say it's the length and the height and the length and breadth and the height and depth, but where are we measuring that from? The earth? Well, that, that reaches to those walls in here when we say that. Do you see what I'm saying? But the universe is, we don't even know. Che and I were talking about that just a few days ago. I mean, the known universe is, is based on what they call the Big Bang Theory, which has sent 
the galaxies and constellations and everything, you know, we'll explain this later too, much later, but going out, and so they can measure space by how far that stuff has blown out, but it's still moving out. So we say the universe is expanding, but really what if, you know, what if you walked in here thinking, you know, the lights are out, you can't see, you've never been in here before, and somebody opened the door for you and gave you a little tiny flashlight and said, you're going into a broom closet. And so you stepped in and you're like, and you can't see very far. And, and the more you go, the more you can discover, but only because of the light that you have. And if you try to shine your little pin light to the far reaches of it, it can't shine. So you're just going, well, how big is this place? It's the biggest broom closet I've done ever seen. <clears throat> you know? And, you know, well, that's what they're doing with the universe. They're going strictly by the light from what they call the Big Bang Theory, and they don't know. My point is, if he's the length and breadth and height and depth, he is not bound by how far the bodies have moved out. He is beyond what we could even imagine. And doesn't the scripture say that? Beyond what we could ask or think. Beyond what we could even think. You know? <clears throat> well, uh, Steve said it to me when we were sitting at the break time. He said, well, you know, with the Lord, one day with the Lord is just a thousand years. I said, well, that ain't earth figuring. But we don't even, we don't even get that. We don't even comprehend that. That doesn't even make sense in our world. But in his world, it makes perfect sense. <clears throat> this is also one of the reasons why I say the quantum world of string theory and all that they're trying to discover, what they have come up with is they think it's a world of chaos, folks. It's only chaos to our order, earth-minded order. It is not chaos. Don't you think the cross looked like chaos to his disciples? It was like, everything's out of control. We were in charge. We were climbing high. We were going for the kingdom. Everything was going to be great. We'd all be rich whatever they thought, you know, we'll be kings of the world, world, you know, on and on and on, and all of a sudden, bam, you know, they grab Jesus, you know, and Peter tries to, you know, defend him and cuts off the guy's ear, and Jesus doesn't rebuke the Malchus, the guy who came to, to take him. He rebukes Peter. Peter's going, what? You know, he picks up the ear, puts it back on, and says, why aren't you healing me? Because I don't know what's going on here. I don't get it. You know? You, can you see? Just chaos. And then they're all running away and they go, what's going on, man? We were that close and just, man, the whole thing fell off. You know? And look, he's way over there on the cross. They, they're killing him. They're slapping him. This thing is out of control. The world as we knew it is over. Hallelujah. Because the world of the kingdom of God comes through death and resurrection. <laughs> and that's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so this uh, example of this city park, this example is just given to say that many times we notice a manifestation of something but never even question or consider underlying factors. Underlying factors. Lord, I want to know what's going on. I don't want to just, you know, that's what some people call faith. They call it blind faith. Folks, faith is not blind. Faith sees clearly. Faith sees God. It sees the cross. It sees God's reality. It looks blind because it has no visible means of support. It's like uh, the Milky Way. What is, what's it hung on? You know, the moon up there. What's it hung on? You know, <clears throat> no 
visible means of support. It didn't say there's no means of support. It's not visible, but just because something isn't visible doesn't mean it can't be seen. And that's what faith is. It is clear cut, wholehearted seeing, but not with the human eye, with the heart. Seeing the Lord. Believe in the Lord in the face of the unseen. And it does, isn't that, you know, uh, what it says of Abraham and Sarah who, against hope, believed in hope? Amen. You know? <clears throat> so, uh, believers are no, notorious <coughs> for this, never questioning or considering underlying factors. Are there deeper, more fundamental realities yet to be discovered that unify and bring oneness and clarity to all the facets of physics or our lives or Christianity or the body of Christ? Or are there more underlying things that if we found, discovered them, that they could be enacted in our life and would settle so many external things that we're trying to get him to fix the manifestation of what's wrong instead of what's wrong by not fixing what is wrong, but by giving us what is him, what is right, if you will, but what is him. Did, are you, were you able to follow what I just said? We're always wanting him to fix the problem, but the problem is never really the problem. The problem, nine times out of ten, is a manifestation of a deeper problem. But, it, but he doesn't want to fix the, the manifestation or the deeper problem. He want, like he doesn't want to get rid of darkness. He wants to turn on the light. But automatically when you do that, the darkness flees. It's just built into its DNA. Light chases darkness. He, he doesn't have to go. He didn't, he didn't create light or create Jesus as the light of the world just to run around and chase darkness. You know, I've got the light. I'm a, I'm a darkness chaser. No, no, we are those who lift up the light. Yes, it chases darkness. That's an automatic. That's not the whole purpose. The purpose is the light. The glory is the light. Not the glory is the light chases darkness, so I don't have any more problems. Yes. Amen. Also, yes. Light is substance. Darkness is absence of substance. <clears throat> That's exactly right. <clears throat> You guys are going to enjoy one of my classes coming up called The Science of Shadows. I was driving down the road, and the Lord hit me with this thing about the science of shadows, and I just went, oh, my God, because it is so, it explains a lot, but it also just freaks you out, because why do we not think like this? Because we're so narrow, and the whole purpose of this class I can't reveal Christ to you. I can't reveal Christ in you. I can't do that. But I can shake you spiritually so that you get hungry or you get, you go, yes, I want, you know, I can shake you out of your sleep where you go, oh, I think I'm going <laughs> to, you know. And, and that's all I want to do. <clears throat> but it is possible to sit in class after class after class and, and you can hear it and you can see it. Anybody ever sat in one of my classes or all of them and felt like you were 100 miles away? <laughs> do, 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 do. Or at least I attended. Do I get credit, Lord? like a bomb. The Lord just dropped it in me. Like, read this passage. And so like, I, you know, I was already in the scriptures anyways. 
But basically, I was kind of in the scriptures so I could say thank you in a nice spiritual way. But man, my Lord was like, you're not doing this anymore. I'm done. We're done with this. And he's like, boom. And I just, <gasps> I just started reading this and, okay, and, you know, writing it down. And the Lord was showing me some really cool stuff. It was blowing me out of my chair. <laughs> and before 20 minutes was up, I was signing, sealing the cards, putting them in the mailbox, and that was it. It was very easy. But it was really the Lord just dropped something in me yesterday. <clears throat> and and it, was, it was just like Debbie has said before. It's like, cut it like a pie right now. And it was just the Lord. That's all it was. And so thank you, Jesus, that those letters that are going out have life in them. Amen. And I think, personally, I think such a good example because what we're talking about here is the reality of Christ in such a way that it affects even the small things of our life. I mean it. How you drive. How you write letters. That, that it begins to affect everything because why? Because of one thing. You really, really do want it to be Christ. You, that's not the party line that you've just, I really want it to be Christ, but I make no effort to change like what we, you know, where we did get an effort here. But I will not accept my way of doing this anymore. I want this to be filled with Christ. Even though it seems so small, it brings glory to the Father because I see my son in a simple act of letter writing. Is that not his son? Yes. Does not his son bring him glory? Yes. Then let him transform our lives. That's just the heart and soul of, of what we're talking about. And that's the, beauty, that's the beauty of quantum physics is it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be subatomic particles and be the answer to everything. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? In your heart, don't let things change in your heart. Amen. All right. However, the beginning of understanding core things comes by observing them in bigger or even in different ways. <clears throat> um, uh, before I read the example here, let me just say <clears throat> the example of using the balloon and rubbing it on your hair and then seeing your hair follow it but not actually touching it and seeing an invisible force. <clears throat> the manifestation can become the beginning of your search for the unseen. Do you see how that, you see in that hair moving says, that hair is not touching that balloon, and yet there's a force between the two that's moving it, and it makes you question, and therefore you start a journey into the unseen. Y'all following this? So manifestation, while it is not the answer, can begin to cause you to look toward the invisible and start asking questions. <clears throat> All right, another example. For example, people used to think that the movement of tides in the form of water on earth had nothing to do with the existence of celestial bodies in the, in the heavens such as the moon. You got tides and water on the earth, and then you got the moon. <clears throat> One person would study water, ocean currents, stuff like that, and become a specialist in their field. I understand the ocean. I'm an oceanographer. Well, and then, then you say to them, before this was found out, well, what about the moon? They go, what about it? That's not my area. I'm talking about Christianity now. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. I am saying that we become specialists in certain areas, and we don't see the link between our area and other areas because we don't see the core reality that holds it all together. And that's where we're trying to go with all this to, to find that. <clears throat> um, one person would study water, oceans, currents, and become a specialist in their field. Someone else would study moon rocks, the nature of reflective material, and the moon in relationship to the sun without ever connecting that with tides, the ocean tides. And yet, even if you made a connection, there would still be a need for going deeper. Apart from the observable, observable, 
of moon and water, which, think about it, doesn't that seem a little weird? Moon and earth water are connected. I mean, if you just, I mean, if you just tried to use logic back then and nobody explained it, you go, somebody says, you know, in your class of physics in, you know, 1797 or whenever, what is the connection with water and moon? And you'd go, none, the moon don't have any. <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't, it, it doesn't seem like those two go together. <clears throat> well, it doesn't seem like a lot of stuff goes together, scripturally, spiritually, church-wise. Ministry-wise, denominationals, it doesn't seem like a lot of stuff. I mean, it seems like a lot of stuff doesn't go together. How can it ever go together? It doesn't go together. It's two different things. Ah, but they're not. They're, they're intricately, intricately tied together. <clears throat> so, and yet, even if you made a connection, there would still be a need for going deeper. Apart from the observable of moon and water, there is an invisible force at work. An invisible force. Here we go. We're talking invisible force. Something unseen causing the seen to react. If you don't get anything else out of, out of this class <clears throat> in terms of physics, you need to get the fact that we will continually over and over and over show that unseen forces are bringing to bear on seen material forces. And they are stronger, they are causing them to move in a certain way or to do certain things. And these invisible forces are more important than the things going on around, than the observable. <clears throat> It is neither the moon itself nor the water that is actually causing the effect. It is a force that is unseen called gravity. <clears throat> We're almost done. One more paragraph here. Like the earth, there are laws that operate. <clears throat> gravity, for example. Electromagnetism, sh sh rubbing the balloon on, you know. <clears throat> there are laws that operate that can be observed but higher laws on a less observable level may not yet be discovered. And I'm speaking spiritually. There may be higher laws that you have yet to discover and you think life is just this. I'm trapped, I'm in this situation, I'm, you know, it's narrow, it's only this, it's this reality. But much of that reality that you are bogged down with is bound up in the observable. It's like Paul in prison. Paul and Silas thrown in prison. And they're looking around and they got four walls. You know, I bet the prisons back there weren't as nice as they are today. <laughs> I bet they stunk. I bet people urinated in there. I bet they probably pooped in there. I bet you they didn't have a, a toilet right in the room with them. And I bet they didn't let them out to go do that. I bet that stench was all in there with them. Their own bodies, not you know, stunk. The rats and, and roaches and everything else. You went to sleep at night, and if you, you had, you know, fecal material on your face, a rat would come chew it off and take your nose with it or something. I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to, you know. And Paul and Silas are in here, and they could be going, "My oh God, get us out of here! Get us out of here! Get us out of here! We're your people. We serve you." In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've never been in a French prison, but uh, but um, but Paul and Silas are singing to the Lord, singing to the Lord. They are living somewhere else than the visible. And I'm telling you, the visible can be a rough environment, but there are, there's another environment that we can live in. We can live in a reality. 
But if we can't live there, because we're so bound by the physical, the observable, it's because there are unseen laws that we have yet to lay hold of. Are you following me? So seek the Lord is the answer. Ah. And an unseen force kicked in for Paul and Silas. Earthquake of all things, unseen, boom, shakes the earth, shakes the manifestation, pops the chains off, pops the doors open. And what do they do? Quick, Silas, get up and run, baby. You know, no. All the other prisoners got up and ran out. They, they stayed in there, and then the prison guard come rushing in and said, you know, I don't, I don't guess the other guys ran out either, but they said, Paul said, we're all here, don't worry. The guy was going to kill himself because his prisoners escaped. And they said, no, no, we didn't escape. We already were free. You're the one in bondage. And the guy goes, I need your God. I need this guy. <laughs> he was the true prisoner. <clears throat> I'm almost done here. <clears throat> For example, invisible laws of aerodynamics. That law was not as observable as gravity. You could see gravity every day if you drop something back then. Right? If you drop something or... I'm walking, but I'm not flying off the planet, you know, stuff like that. <clears throat> um, but, but the law of aerodynamics back then, since there were no planes, you didn't see any, hardly any manifestation of it. There were manifestations, but not like gravity. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, some invisible laws are more observable than others. <clears throat> um, to operate in these higher laws to any success would require airplanes to be built, but most of time up to that point on Earth uh, passed before they became a reality. Was the law of aerodynamics always there? Yeah. Yes, but connecting these two apparently different laws was the beginning of understanding in that arena. Gravity pulls one way, but aerodynamics does not pull, it lifts and it lifts upward. You, you, you have to start thinking differently. You can't be pulled by the earth. You can't only think in terms of one dimension. <clears throat> All right, you know what? I'm gonna stop right here. Yes, come in. Okay. Yes? It, it would be okay to pray. We allow standing and prayer. All right. Shall we stand? Are you going to pray? Okay, let, let her rip.